Let me start off by telling you a story. On the evening of August 23rd, residents of a small Russian village called Kuzemkino were rattled by the sound of an explosion in the sky. They then watched a jet fall into the Russian countryside and burst into flames. No one on that plane survived the crash. As it turns out, the Wagner chief, Yevgeny Prokhorin, the man who posed the biggest challenge to the Russian president, Vladimir Putin's authority in recent times, was among the 10 people who died in that crash. Vladimir Putin has expressed his condolences. He has called Prokhorin a man of complicated fate. Let me just repeat that for you. A man of complicated fate. Prokhorin came for the king in the Kremlin and he was killed. The king's grip on power is now stronger than ever. Even if it took two months. Only a few doubt that Putin was behind what the US believes was an assassination attempt. But let's just be clear. If it is ever proven that the plane crash was an act of deliberate cold-blooded revenge, it will go down as the ultimate special military operation. Ever since he led a mutinous march on Moscow in late June, the Wagner boss was seen as what many called a dead man walking. In late June, Progoshin said his mercenaries were only marching to Moscow to oust the Russian defense minister and the chief of staff of the armed forces, General Valery Gerasimov. Pirogoshin, you see, had accused both of mismanaging the Russia-Ukraine war and that too in profane terms. But an armed rebellion in Russia was a clear challenge to the Russian president and he looked surprisingly vulnerable when he failed to crush that mutiny. After all, he had denounced the group's leaders as traitors. But as is the case in today's Russia, we know very little about what really goes on in Putin's court. What we do know is that Putin does not and would not forgive. Perhaps Yevgeny Prokhorin knew his days were numbered. According to Russian media reports, in fact, he had taken his private jets to confuse people, checking in for a flight but never actually getting on board or flying with two at once so that no one could tell which one he was actually on. But that trick seems to have failed him this time. On the ill-fated day, two of his jets were airborne, but while the second landed unharmed near Moscow, the one carrying him crashed. So how did he manage to defy Putin and still remain alive for so long? Remember that rebellion took place in the month of June. He appeared down but not out. From being filmed in Belarus to being photographed on the sidelines of the Russia-Africa summit. And then this week, he was seen armed and ready in camouflage somewhere in Africa, reportedly. For two months, everything was upside down in Russia. For two months, Vladimir Putin looked rather weak. People assumed, in fact, that Pirogozhin could manage a second act. He was seen continuing Wagner's work in Africa where his mercenaries are most active in countries like CAR, Libya, Mali, Sudan, in countries that have strained ties with the West, Russia's African project relied on him. But in Russia, the Kremlin was moving to remove hardliners, quote-unquote, who criticized the Ukraine war. Igor Girkin, a former commander of the Russian proxy forces in Ukraine, was arrested last month, in fact. He had persistently criticized Putin and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And then the Russian general, Sergei Sorovakin, or General Armageddon, as he was called. He was sacked as the Air Force chief. He has not been seen in public since the Wagner mutiny. But let's just get back to focusing on the Wagner chief, Pirogozhin. Vladimir Putin was taking his time, it seems, to assess the damage, you know, to disperse the Wagner's forces. Over the last two months, the mercenaries were spread out geographically. Some were sent to Belarus, others to Africa. Putin knew striking Pirogozhin would be a gamble. 
and he needed to wait for the right time to play his card. A time when the chances of a reaction would be close to zero. The Wagner mercenaries had to disappear. General Armageddon had to disappear. Also, what better cover than bricks? And with the Wagner chief gone, Putin has sent out a message that he was waiting to. For Pyrrhokushin's men, the message is one of fear. And for the Russian armed forces, it is that of revenge. And for everyone else who is following this story, the message is quite clear. You do not cross Vladimir Putin. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.